Okay. Hello, can you see me okay? I hope you can. Uh, this is the meeting for uh, June 15, 2020. And as you can see, I'm wearing my baseball uniform and my Dodger hat here. And I have my water in my Dodger cup. And for those of you who are Angel fans, well, um, I, I love the Angels too, but I don't have much of their, uh, their equipment. So I'm sorry, I can't wear that today. <clears throat> to start off, I wanna tell you that just a few days ago was the, um, actually it was on June 12th, I think three days ago, was the date in 1839 when the baseball was actually invented. So in honor of baseball, I thought I'd help you sing the song and you can sing it with me. We're going to sing, take me out to the ball game. Are you ready? One, two, one, two, three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. So it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Because it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Now, there's a second verse to that, which I'm going to read instead of sing. But thank you. If you sang along with me, I appreciate it. All I need is just one chance. I could hit a home run. There isn't anyone else like me. Maybe I'll go down in history. And it's root, root, root for the home team. Here comes fortune and fame. Because I know that I'll be the star at the old ball game. Let's try this song, a part we know. Let's do that one more time and get in the mood, okay? One, two, three, and take. Me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back for its root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Yes, it was back in 1839 that the baseball was invented. And I wanted to tell you some interesting facts about it. But before that, I wanted to show you what the parts of a baseball, you can look at this picture and you can see the inside of it here. And it shows you which part is the black rubber. And then there's a red lining that goes around it. And the orange part is uh, actually cork. So there's cork on the inside, then black rubber, then red rubber, then yarn, and the outside is cowhide. And that's the way that a regulation baseball has looked for a long, long time. Another piece of equipment that's rather old, this is from 1904, and it shows, it was patented then, and it was what was called the baseball catcher. And you can see in this picture who would wear that. Well, the catcher wore that for special protection. And I guess they needed it then, just like they need it now. So I wanted to give you some facts about the MLB, 10 interesting facts. Now the MLB is invited and divided into the American and the National Leagues. The designated hitter is an American League position that only bats and does not play the field. William Howard Taft, our 27th United States president, began the tradition of throwing out the ceremonial pitch in 1910. The record number of world championships, well, 
That's held by the New York Yankees at 27. The St. Louis Cardinals are second on the list with 11. Mike Trout was from Los Angeles, still is. He's with the Angels, been with them, I think, over 30 years. And in 2014, he was the American League most valuable player. Clayton Kershaw with the LA Dodgers was the most valuable player in 2014. Some other interesting facts. Well, let me see if I can find the other paper. Oh, doggone it. I think I just lost it. Well, here it is. No, no, that's not it. The oldest professional baseball team is the Cincinnati Red Stockings. Now they're the Cincinnati Reds, and they were founded a long time ago, 1869. How many stitches on a uh, Major League Baseball? 108. Can you imagine somebody took the time to actually count those stitches? What's the distance, officially, from the pitcher's mound to home plate. It is 60 feet, six inches. How many feet between each of the four bases? 90 feet. And that's all I'm gonna tell you about the uh, baseball right now. Uh, you know, the MLB has not started playing for the season of 2020. This is one year that's definitely gonna be one for the books. Because of the quarantine and because of the COVID-19 or SARS-2, as some people call it, because of that virus, uh, we are still not allowed to go into phase four, which is where large concert venues and sports arenas would be open to major crowds. You imagine all the people filing in there wearing a mask? Well, that may happen, but it has not happened as of this date of June 15, 2020. So we'll just have to see what kind of negotiations they come up and see, is there any way they're gonna be able to salvage the 2020 season at all? I have to tell you, I miss watching the baseball games every night that was something my husband and i would do and we would cheer them with something besides water in this glass so we're going to move now from baseball this has been a week of many many different events next one i want to talk about was from yesterday june 14th was flag day we covered this quite a bit last week giving you the history of betsy ross but I wanted to tell you about a man named William Driver. Who was he? Well, he's the man who nicknamed our flag Old Glory. Although Flag Day is a nationwide observance, it is not a public holiday yet in many parts of our country. It did become official in August 1940. 49, when President Harry Truman signed the legislation and proclaimed June 14th as Flag Day. In 1966, Congress requested that the President annually issue the week of June 14 as National Flag Week. The flag is displayed on all government buildings and residents are urged to fly their flag as well. A flag dare ceremony was held at the Nashville City Cemetery to observe this, and people gathered to hear many speakers yesterday. What was so special about it was the attendance of several family members of William Driver. Again, he was the man who nicknamed our flag Old Glory. The originally old, original Old Glory was a flag owned by Driver, who was a 19th century American sea captain. He was born in 1803, and he died in 1886. He flew the flag during his career at sea, 
and he later brought the flag to Nashville, Tennessee, where he settled. According to most history books, Driver greatly prized the flag, and he ensured its safety from Confederates who attempted to seize the flag during the American Civil War. After the war, Driver's daughter and niece feuded over which one of them owned the original Old Glory. In 1922, the flag claimed to be the original Old Glory he became part of the collection of the Smithsonian Institute, where it remains at the National Museum of American History. Driver is buried in the Nashville City Cemetery, which is Nashville's oldest cemetery. And that's where they held their flag event on Flag Day. Next thing I want to tell you is that June 14th, is also known as the birthday of our current U.S. President, Donald Trump. But I wanted to tell you, first of all, about five memorable presidential birthdays. Okay, so let's look at the first one that I want to mention, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Now, this man, uh, was president in part of the 1930s and part of the 1940s. I have a picture of him at a toga theme party uh, for January 30, 1934. And it was just the latest in a series of birthday parties organized each year by his inner circle known as the Cufflink Gang. Here they are, here he is. And you can see him in the front with holding a toga party. FDR gave each of his good friends one cuff link with his initials and the other with his own, according to the FDR library. Over the year, male and females joined the club and each new member received a set, one with their own initials, one with FDR's initials. The next memorable presidential birthday that I want to tell you about is the birthday of John F. Kennedy. He was having his 45th birthday bash at Madison Square Garden on May 19, 1962. Marilyn Monroe came out and serenaded the president. That prompted long running speculation about whether the president was having an affair. Guess who else was wondering that? J. Edgar Hoover, whose FBI undertook an effort to investigate a tape that was thought, but never proved, to feature the two of them. Oh, how I wish I had a picture of that event. I'm sorry, I don't. The next one is Ronald Reagan. Here he is, he's standing behind a lectern. First Lady Nancy Reagan is standing in a side doorway. She's planning to surprise the president with a uh, birthday cake before his February 6th birthday in 1983 he was the president was talking to reporters about defense spending his wife interrupted the meeting and walked right up to him with a cake it was all caught on videotape and that was a memorable occasion all right we have another president who had a memorable birthday it was Richard Nixon. Sorry, I don't have a picture of this one either. The president was wearing a maroon sports coat for his surprise birthday on January 9th, 1974. The party had been organized by his staff at his Western White House in San Clemente, California. 
with First Lady Pat Nixon and their daughter, Trisha. The family dog, an Irish setter named King Timaho, stole the show because he took the first bite out of the cake before the birthday boy could even try it. And he even smeared some of it on the president's maroon jacket. And the people from NBC were quick to capture the moment and feature it on that evening's news. Next birthday I wanna tell you about is the one of our last president, Barack Obama. He celebrated his last birthday as America's 44th president with a star-studded party at the White House. A-list stars in attendance, according to the New York Times, included Stevie Wonder and Usher, who performed, as well as Paul McCartney of the Beatles, Magic Johnson, basketball player, George Lucas from the film industry, Ellen DeGeneres, who has a popular TV show, Nick Jonas, and Grant Hill. Now, I want to tell you about one that I would add to the memorable list, and that is the first uh, uh, presidential birthday that Donald Trump spent. On his 71st birthday, he expected a quiet morning, but 2017, on June 14th, he woke up to a shooting. There was nothing marked on his public schedule till late afternoon, but that was shattered by early reports that a shooter had opened fire on Republican lawmakers and staff at a baseball practice across the Potomac River in Virginia. The White House staff canceled Trump's scheduled public events and scrambled to bring details to the president as he watched on TV. The news came out that House Majority Whip Representative Steve Scalise from Louisiana and a congressional aide had both been shot. Trump posted on Twitter shortly before 9 a.m. Eastern Time that Scalise, quote, a true friend and patriot, but was badly injured and will fully recover. Our thoughts and prayers are with him, unquote. Scalise was shot in the hip on the ball field in Al Alexandria shortly before 7 a.m. and taken to George Washington University Hospital in Washington for surgery. Aides told reporters Trump would cancel his scheduled speech of the Department of Labor on Wednesday afternoon. Vice President Mike Pence canceled the morning speech at the National Association of Home Building Builders in Washington to stay in the West Wing with the president. And you know, I have to say that it did take Steve Scalise uh, months and months of intensive therapy to recover from that shooting. And one of the security people was a wonderfully brave young black woman who risked her life. And she also took some fire from the shooter before she tackled him to the ground. That was quite a memorable birthday. Now, the other thing I wanted to tell you was that the president has had some big, big birthdays in style in the past. One of his lavish parties came in 1996 when then wife Marla Maples threw him an epic birthday bash at Trump Tower. It included a speech from his then teenage daughter, Ivanka. Well, his birthday this year, I think, will be rather quiet. He is going to celebrate or has been celebrating at his home in New Jersey while meeting with campaign advisors and getting ready for his uh, first public rally I think it's going to be in uh, Arizona, and that will be coming up in a little while. You know, because of the quarantine, our two candidates, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, have not been able to have any public debates, and they have not had 
um, open air rallies. But I guess now that so many of us, our states are going back into phase three, and a few are even into phase four, that open air rallies will be permitted with physical distancing and masks. We'll have to see how that turns out. Now I wanna to switch topics, and that is I wanna go over to Father's Day, which is coming up this coming Sunday. I wanna to talk to you about some Father's Day facts. You know, it's one of the most awaited holidays in the world. This is the day, if your father is alive, where you have an opportunity to tell him how much he means to you. Of course, you don't need a special occasion to tell him that, but it can make the day more special. In most of the countries around the world, besides the United States, the United Kingdom, India, Canada, China, France, Greece, Japan, and even Hong Kong all celebrate Father's Day on the third Sunday of June. The person credited for inventing the concept of Father's Day is Mrs. Sonora Dodd, an American whose father had raised his six children single-handedly after his wife passed away. The first American president to support the concept of Father's Day was President Calvin Coolidge, who first did so in 1924. But it was not until 1966 that President Lyndon Johnson signed a presidential proclamation, resulting in the declaration officially of declaring the third Sunday of June as Father's Day. Of course, the first Father's Day originated in our country, and it started in 1910. And it was held in Spokane, Washington. Now, what's some of the gifts that people give their father on Father's Day? It used to be neckties, but you know, I've seen that neckties are going out of style. I see a lot of guys unbuttoning the top button on their shirt opening it up and wearing it with a sports jacket and no tie. So I don't know if the tie is still gonna be the first gift or not. I would say that the second gift now is flowers and people like to give dad uh, carnations. Also greeting cards, that's the number one item for a lot of people. And what about the word dad? The word dad, was first heard as early as the 1500s. It wasn't just father, it was dad. People also call him Papa, Pops. I don't know, what do you call your father? Uh, it would be interesting to find out. <clears throat> well, you know, uh, dads have usually been going to work, but it does seem now that 20% of today's fathers stay home with younger children. Now, I'm not talking about during quarantine. I'm talking about when there is no quarantine. Many families, 32%, split the responsibility of childcare. Many dads with full-time jobs regularly work evening or night shifts, and their mothers work the morning hours. So it's hard to say who is gonna always be the first person to be raising the kids at home. Well, right now they're both there, or they have been, although I have to say now that over 85% of our businesses have reopened and we expect to see good uh, statistics from the economy as it begins to go up, up, up again during third quarter. Here's some more interesting facts for Father's Day. Number one, Halsley Taylor invented the drinking fountain in 1912 as a tribute to his father, who had succumbed to typhoid fever in 1896 after drinking from a contaminated public water supply. Number two, George Washington is called the father of our country. 
but he never had any children of his own. Is it because of TB, tuberculosis, that he contracted in childhood? Or maybe the chicken pox, smallpox, which he had gotten while visiting an older brother in the Caribbean area. He did adopt the two children from his wife Martha's first marriage. In Thailand, the king's birthday also serves as National Father Day. The celebration includes fireworks, speeches, and acts of charity. A. A. Milne created Winnie the Pooh. Maybe we have a famous story for your kids. For his son, Christopher Robin. Pooh was based on Robin's teddy bear, Edward, a gift that Christopher had received for his first birthday. And on their father son visits to the London Zoo, where the bear named Winnie was Christopher's favorite. One more from these interesting facts. Kurt Vonnegut was, for a short time, Geraldo Rivera's father-in-law. Rivera's marriage to Edith Vonnegut ended in 1974 because he had gotten a girlfriend. Her ever-protective father was quoted as saying, if I see Jerry again, I'll spit in his face. Well, I want to end with a very touching story called Dad's Angelic Visitors. This is written by Diantha Stensford from Angels on Earth, published in 2011. <clears throat> Her father was in hospice and she was caring for him with the help of hospice nurses. That way, dad could still enjoy some things he loved. From a hospital bed set up in his living room, dad could talk to mom, read, or play solitaire. Some days he felt strong enough to play his organ. Dad was a professional musician. But his voice, once so rich and familiar, was already so weak, he could barely make any sound at all. They were getting ready for uh, another daughter getting married soon. Her fiance, Patrick and Melissa, that's who he wanted to focus on, was the upcoming wedding. Well, they were just getting ready to change his dressings and he heard the doorbell ring. A couple I'd never seen before stood on the stoop. I'm Winnie, the woman said. Her smile was so natural and friendly, it was clear she smiled a lot. This is my husband, Fred. We just moved into the neighborhood. I shook hands with them both. We just had to meet whoever made all the beautiful music, said Fred. I introduced them to mom and dad. When he complimented dad on his playing, within moments I saw when his smile reflected on dad's face. Winnie and Fred were still there when I left. They seemed to have no trouble hearing his voice at all, no matter how weak it was getting. In fact, his voice sounded a little stronger since they'd come. I'll see you soon, I said, kissing dad goodbye. A few days later, mom told me, Winnie likes cards as much as your dad. They played for hours yesterday, much longer than the other nurses. Dad absolutely loved it. Patrick, Melissa, and I got used to seeing Winnie at the house. Sometimes she was with Fred. Sometimes she came by herself. Your dad's been telling me about his amazing career. She said one afternoon as I arrived, Dad was at the organ taking her song requests. I'm a nurse myself. Dad shrugged modestly, but his blue eyes sparkled <clears throat> just the way they used to before he got sick. Winnie sure has a great effect on Dad, I told Mom. I didn't know she was a nurse. Well, she's sure a big help, said Mom. Have you noticed the difference in Dad when he's with her? It's like he lights up whenever she's with him. 
Out in the living room, Dad laughed. It was that great big belly laugh that I hadn't heard in ages. When he's the only one who can get him to laugh like that, Mom said. The other day, she arrived at the door wearing a red clown nose she'd made with Dad so Mom could sleep. Across the room, Winnie chatted with Mom. For the first time that day, Mom, the weary caretaker, was almost smiling. Patrick's wedding went on as planned, just as Dad wanted. But I wasn't really able to laugh much about it. I did keep on the lookout, looking for happy things that reminded me about Dad. A few days after the wedding, I drove over to see Mom. I brought flowers for Winnie. She doesn't have any furniture yet, Mom, in her house, I said. I had no doubt Winnie would appreciate the bright colors. I walked over to the townhouse and knocked on the door. Then I noticed a sign on the sidewalk outside the house. Condo for lease. I had never noticed that sign when I'd walked Winnie home. Was there a mistake? Were Winnie and Fred moving away already? I walked over to the manager's office. The condo says it's for lease, I said, pointing to Winnie and Fred's place. Did the couple there move already, Winnie and Fred? I don't know anybody there by that name, he said. That unit has been empty for at least two months. Nobody's even asked about leasing it, much less moving in. 20 years later, much longer after Dad passed on, looking at the old photo album, Patrick, Melissa, and I went silent, each pondering the mystery of Winnie and Fred. We never saw or heard from them again. We don't even have pictures, I said. It's as if they never existed. But everything would have been so different if we hadn't met them. I think they were angels, said Patrick. They came to help Dad, and they helped all the rest of us, too. Was Patrick right? I guess I still don't know for sure. But when I think of angels now, I picture them wearing red clown noses. That certainly gives me something to laugh about. And I hope that you have had a wonderful Father's Day, whether your father is living or has passed on. And I think of you all often and miss you and hope that we can be together before you know it. I hope I've given you a few pleasant thoughts to think about today as well. Bye. See you next time.